everybody. Well, welcome. Uh, good evening. Uh, we're going to be doing some family devotions uh, here tonight. Facebook. So what we're going to be doing is, as we do our uh, family family devotions, just kind of going to be doing what I do with, with my family. Uh, we've been working through a book here called The King of Glory. And it has 70 uh, chapters in it, which give a, a chronological overview of the whole Bible. And so it's, a, it's an approach I like to use, teaching uh, from the beginning to the end, an overview of the entire Bible, because I feel like it really helps the kids have an understanding of the big picture and how things fit together. And so we've, we've started this, we've been doing it for a few weeks, so we're actually going to be starting over and starting it together with, with you guys as a, as a group. And uh, we're going to be uh, starting in chapter one. And as we go along, I'll be bringing out different object lessons to, to make some make some illustrations and help kind of reinforce uh, what we're what we're learning. Um, and then we'll be asking questions uh, along the way. So I'd like to open us uh, with a word of prayer. Let's pray, uh, dear Father. Uh, we we just thank you that you're a God that. Uh, wants to be known. You're a loving God. You want to reveal yourself to us. You, you desire fellowship with us. You desire a relationship with us. And help us to get to know you better as we look into your word, as we look into um, the your plan for the ages and your rescue plan for that you have for, for each one of us. We just thank you for who you are. And I ask that you would be teaching us and we, tonight, and we ask that all our technology and all our systems will be able to work so we could all hear your word. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Travis, let me ask you a question. You've been doing this for a few weeks. How do you like this book? Um, I really love it. Um, I love to um, hear more about God and more about him so I can um, improve the book. Okay. Awesome. Very good. So we're going to go in uh, to chapter one, and then we're just going to start uh, start by reading. And so uh, page 12 is actually the first, first part of the book here. And it starts out, long, long before the world began, there was a king, the king of glory. This king was far, far above and beyond anyone or anything you or I could imagine. In the endlessness of eternity, he was the only king, and his kingdom was the only kingdom. It's a realm of perfect wisdom, love, joy, and peace. The kingdom had no need, of, no need of sun or stars, for the king himself was its light. While the kingdom was limitless in size, it was limited in subjects. Some say the king had no subjects at all, that he was all alone. Or was he? One of the early mysteries of this king was that even when he alone existed, he was never alone. And Travis, why is that? Um, because he had the Holy Spirit in the, the um God the Father. God the Father. God the Father. Um, Holy Spirit. I know. God the Holy Spirit. And God the Son. God the Son. Okay, so it's three persons, but how many gods? It's all in one. All in one. So three persons. Distinct persons that you can get to know, but it's one God. Okay, so God is a God of fellowship. Even before he created anything, he, he the, the Bible says the Father loved the Son. So he's a God who's always been in relationship. Okay, so he was never alone, but still he wanted to share his life with other intelligent beings. So this good and wise king made a heavenly province with millions of dazzling, super intelligent spirit beings called humans. Ah, oh, okay, angels. Sorry, Travis. Okay, yeah, they're angels. Okay, let's see what God makes next, Travis. Okay. 
Okay, so he made these angels, and he knew them all by name, and he wanted them to know him too. Life with the king was nonstop adventure, but the king wanted more than angels, so he created a realm of time, space, and matter, a mind-boggling universe with a sparkling planet that would become home to a community of amazing creatures called humans. Okay, so God made angels and then humans. Different from angels, the human family began with just two beings, a man and a woman. And do you know what their names were? I see that hand. Travis. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Excellent. As with the angels, the king wanted to share his life with them too. But then something happened. Something terrible. Rebellion arose in the kingdom, first in heaven and then on earth. A rebel angel seized the kingdom of earth by capturing its humans. Oh, no. But the king was not taken by surprise. Deep in the heart of, a king, of this king was a rescue plan so great so mysterious, so extravagant, so far-reaching that it would take thousands and thousands of years to fulfill it. But what else would you expect from the king of eternity? He lives above time. So what does eternity mean? Ever. Forever. Okay, so forever and ever. That's eternity. Okay, so this is a king who lives forever. He's always been there, and he always will be there. Now we're in chapter 2. And now we're going to read about the king and his plan. Remember how the last chapter said the king had a rescue plan. So how is he going to tell us his plan? Where can we learn about his plan? The Bible. The Bible. Okay, so if we're going to know the king's rescue plan to rescue everything, it's going to be in the Bible. All right, so to know the king and his rescue plan, you must know his book. And what's his book called? The Bible. The Bible. Okay, over more than 15 centuries, that's 1,500 years, the king chose about 40 people to write his story and message. They were called prophets. The king gave them his words, which they wrote on scrolls to be copied, circulated, and kept for future generations. So let me do, let, let me write something here on this piece of paper. I am going to write my name. Okay, so who, who, who just wrote that? Well, okay, me or the pen? Me. Okay, so technically I wrote it, but I used a pen as my instrument of writing. But I did the pen make the did the, yeah. the pen know to make my name? I told it to, right? Okay, I did, and the pen did what I told it to. Okay, and so just like that, God used men to write his work. So God did the writing, but he used the man like as his writing instrument. Okay. So we say, we might say men wrote the Bible, but it was men who God told what to do. So it's really God who, who, who wrote the Bible, but he used men to do it. But it's God's word that God recorded. Just like I told this pen what to write. Okay. And then they, they didn't have a, a books back in the beginning, so they used scrolls. And people today talk about scrolling on their phone where they're just reading on and on on their phone. But in the early days, they would make copies and copies and copies of the Bible because they knew it was important and they knew it was God's work. So they wanted to be very care, careful about copying it. So they would make copies, and then you could put them on the scroll. And then you could read 
it's kind of nice. You just kind of move, move as you as you read. You kind of um, turn the turn the handle as you read. So that's what a scroll would look like. Okay. All right. So though most of the prophets never knew each other, their writings tell one consistent story and message. The writings of the prophets are called the Holy Scriptures. Without the scriptures, we can only guess where we came from. We can only guess why we're here and where we're going. To know the correct answers, we need the king's book. About 3,500 years ago, the king inspired a prophet by the name of Moses to write, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, or mouth of the Lord. And it's kind of funny, one time one of our kids was uh, memorizing this verse, and so we were kind of prompting them to, to help them get the verse and to finish it. And so we started off, man does not live by bread alone, but by, and we were, you know, going to have our, our child, one of our children, uh, finish the verse. And so they thought about it for a second, and they said, coffee. So quite, quite an observation, but not uh, technically the rest of the verse. Man is still live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And coffee too. Okay. Today, the king's words are collected in one book, the Holy Bible. Holy means it's pure and it's set apart from all others. And so the Bible is a very special or unique book. And Caleb, what makes this book different from all the other books? Um, it, it, it was written by God. That's exactly right. That's what makes this diff book different from all the other books, which were written just by men. But remember, God used the men as his tool to write the Bible. Okay, so the Bible is the world's best-selling book. It is the world's most translated book. Thousands of papyrus. That's kind of a funny word. Papyrus, it's paper made from, from reeds or plants. Yeah. And leather scrolls. And it is the best one of the it is the best preserved of all ancient texts. And let's let's think about because the Bible was copied so many times, and people are worried, well, like. Well, if it was copied so many times and it's an old book, it must be full of mistakes. So how can we know what it really said? So we want to do like a little demonstration here of how having a lot of copies is actually a very good safeguard. So we're going to start out here with a peanut butter fudge recipe. And believe it or not, peanut butter fudge is a superfood. Just on the small amounts of this food, according with this recipe, if you do it the right way, you could you can uh, live for a long time on the energy and the calories contained in this peanut butter fudge. This is a real recipe. I've got the simple ingredients listed here. Um, so let's just say this recipe is our original copy of the Bible. So Chloe, would you take care of our original copy of the Bible? And then Chloe is nice enough to let two of her friends copy her recipe. So now we have two copies, thank you Chloe, of this delicious peanut butter fudge recipe. And then, so if you would hold those two copies for me, Caleb, and then those two friends each let two of their friends copy the recipe. So you get to hold four. So hold up four, two in each hand. Can you hold that many? Yeah. So hold them up. Okay, now we have a problem because we lost no. the original recipe. Oh no, it's lost. And then guess what? Oh no, we lost the second generation copies. <laughs> but now we still have four copies. So if you're watching there and you see this recipe on your screen, I have an assignment for you. So we've got four copies here. I want to see if you can get us back 
to the exact original recipe. So Chloe, hold that. Don't let anyone see the original recipe. So we're going to take these four copies and we're going to see if we can accurately recreate the original peanut butter fudge recipe. Now let me tell you something. I want you to look carefully at these three or these four copies. In three of the copies, there is one error in each of the first three copies. So I want you to see if you can notice the error in each of the first three on the ones on top. Find the error and see if you can correct the error. So I wanna give you a little time to look at those, find the three errors in the recipe, one on each of the first three cards, and see if you can correct the error. So you guys look at these and see if you can find the mistakes. No, look at them all together. Okay, so look at them together. What's the error? 12 is an error. Can you correct that error? 11 is an error. Okay, so let's correct that error. What should it say? Should it say 12? Two. Okay, it should say two. Okay, and you said 11. What should it say? One. One, and what's the other error? Okay, it's one of these. Okay, so we've got one more error. Oh, we found a third error. What should it say? Cup. It should say cup. Okay, so at home, I don't know if you found the three errors in our recipe. So let's see if you found the three errors. The first error is this one, 12 sticks of butter. That's a little too many. And the correct answer, if you look at the rest of the, the other ones that are correct, it should be two. The second error is 11 boxes of sugar. Dang. That is wrong. It's only one box of sugar. Okay. So hardly any sugar, just one whole box. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. Why are y'all laughing? Okay. And then the, the third error is one pint of peanut butter. And it should say one cup. cup. Okay, so let's see, what do you think is the original recipe? So look at these, tell me what Two you think. Two sticks of butter. Chloe, is that correct? Two sticks of butter or margarine? Okay. Yes. One box of powdered sugar. One box? Yes. Okay. One cup peanut butter. One cup yes. peanut butter. One, one cup can of peanut One can of chocolate frosting? Did we get it right, Chloe? 100%? No. Okay. So there you see, when we have a lot of copies of a document, we can spot the errors and we can know what they should say. So we can be very confident that the Bible that we have is an accurate, extremely accurate Bible that would square up very nicely with the original. All right. So now everyone wants peanut butter fudge, right? Yes. So you guys, if you want peanut butter fudge, talk to Mel Ray uh, to finish out. Basically, you want to use super low heat. You throw in the, the butter first, get the butter melted, then put in the peanut butter, still using low heat. You gotta take your time, you stir it under low heat. Then stir in the sugar, just one box, and then stir it up real nice, put it in a baking dish, put it in the fridge, let it get hard, and then frost it. Don't overdo the frosting, kind of balance it properly, and then you'll have perfect peanut butter fudge, and you can live, you can probably live until the end of the pandemic on if you make a big, make a double batch, and you'll be able to have that for a month. Is it? Okay. Boxes? If we dubbed it cold boxes in there, I would be wanting to like, have a sugar oh, for like a whole day. Yes, yes, I know. Yes. Yeah, the kids, the kids have to be able to go outside and play. So, okay. okay. So let's get back to talking about the Bible. So the scriptures have two main parts. The what testament and the what testament? Oh, what testament? The old and the new. Okay, and which one it covers the most of the Bible? Old old. 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 How much of the Bible? Uh, How much 20 of the Bible? Okay. It's two thirds of the Bible. So two thirds of the Bible is old testament, one third is new. And so before we, you know, when you go through the Bible, before you really present the person of Jesus Christ, you're two-thirds into the Bible. And that's why I like the chronological approach, because 
before you introduce the person of Jesus Christ, you have all the Old Testament foundation built in. And so this book is about half Old Testament and half New Testament. Okay, so the first part of it is the Old Testament. That's where the king foretells his plan, or he tells you what he's going to do, and he gets you ready for it and looking forward to it. The second part of the Bible is the New Testament. That's where the king fulfills his plan. So testament means a covenant, a contract, or an agreement. The Old Testament foretells what God planned to do. The New Testament records the fulfillment of his plan. Only God can write history before it happens. The difference between the Old and the New Testament is the difference between having a great king send you letters and photos and having that king come visit you in person because that's what happened when Jesus Christ came uh, to earth. He came. He's the king who came to us in person. So the scriptures came first to the Middle East. They came to Africa and Asia and Europe. Then they came later to the Americas and beyond. The prophets came from the Middle East, but the story and message they wrote is for every nation, for every family, for every person, and for you, for each one of you, each one of us. Okay, so someone may ask you, oh, the Bible? How is the Bible different from any other book? Well, obviously, God wrote it. And someone might say, well, how do we know God wrote it? Okay, so how would we answer that? Let's talk about how we would answer that. Because it has like 40 different authors, and they all speak about the same thing. And yes, they, they do. Okay, great. That's one of them. And they, like, don't, they didn't really. And those, all those authors don't contradict. Okay. What's another reason we can know the Bible is from God? I believe in Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, well, and knowing God and hearing God is the beginning of wisdom, and that definitely helps us to, to know God and to know his Bible. But let's talk about some reasons of how we can know uh, God wrote it. So if someone asks you that, you might want to ask them a question. Just, just So you might want to ask them a question. You might, you might ask them, well, if, if God did write a book, how would we know it was from him? And so ask them for some of the evidence that they would accept as proof that it had to be from God. So just ask them, if, if, okay, if God really gave us a book, what are some ways we could know it was from him? And that might cause them to think. And then they might say, well, I don't know. And then you could say, well, I believe the Bible for two ordinary reasons and two miraculous reasons. So we're gonna go two plus two, two ordinary and two miraculous, miraculous reasons. Okay, so the two ordinary reasons that we can believe the Bible is from God is because it's very honest about people. The Bible tells the, talks about people and all their mistakes and all their faults, and the Bible tells us every single person is sinful. And if men wrote a Bible, do you think men would, it would men would have all that stuff in there and talk about how bad we are? Yeah. Now, I would probably say, oh, we're all good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the Bible is honest about people. Okay. The second ordinary reason is the Bible is very accurate about people, places, things. Archaeology continues to support the Bible. And so the Bible is very honest, and it's very accurate. So those are our two ordinary reasons. Now let's talk about the two miraculous reasons. Chloe, you gave us one. All these different guys, or yeah, you know, guy, it was all guys, 40 different authors that lived over 1,500 years that didn't know, most of them didn't even know each other, and they wrote one message, that, and they didn't argue, and it didn't contradict. How is that possible? They had to be guided by someone besides themselves. They were guided by God. And what's another miraculous reason that shows the Bible is from God? And it's something we read about. Only God can write history before 
before it happens. So the Bible talks about things that haven't even happened yet, and it talks about them in specific detail. And a lot of the things in the Old Testament that were future when they were written, they happened exactly like the Bible said it was going to happen. So the Bible predicts, accurately predicts specific events in the future. And then some of the things in the Bible that it's predicting haven't happened yet. Okay, so the Bible is exciting. And then it's a book that even tells us what's going to happen in the future. Can any other book do that for you? Yeah. Not really. They might have some guesses, but the Bible is fully accurate in specifically predicting the future. And it's been proven accurate over, over time. So remember, two plus two. Yeah. It's honest about people. It's accurate about people and places. And then the two miraculous reasons are because of the, all the authors that didn't contradict each other and the Bible predicts the future. So the Bible is a book we can absolutely yeah. trust. Okay, so we're going to stop there tonight in our reading. And um, next time we're going to talk about uh, how God wanted to create everything and because he wanted to create because he loves having a relationship with us and he's a god that wants a relationship so let's um close our time in prayer can you guys think of any anybody or anything you'd like to pray for okay and yeah anyone out there listening any prayer requests that you want to type in we'd love love to have them um to protect us from the virus. To protect us from the virus, okay. Very good. Uh, for Junie for, um, uh, Okay. But I don't... Junie Cora, okay. And June is pregnant, by the way, so... She's She's our oldest. Yeah, June's our June, oldest. For those of you who don't know, June's our oldest daughter. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any so uh, Sarah asks for her husband is working tonight mm -hmm. and he's a nurse and oh. she's asking that his night would be calm. And Misty asks that we pray for those on the front lines of the pandemic. Okay. Christina Lee asks to grant us grace with our family and this, just the stress that life brings us. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go to, to the Lord in prayer. And just remember, prayer is just simply talking to God. Let's talk to God together. Uh, dear, dear Father, we thank you that we can bring anything on our hearts and minds before you. We thank you that you care about us. We thank you that you want a relationship with us and you love hearing from us. And Father, just uh, on our hearts tonight, we have first responders. We have people in the medical community. We just pray for their safety. We pray for that you give them extra energy to care for uh, all the, the needy people that are out there. Uh, protect their health, protect their families, uh, and allow them just to really... Uh, uh, help other people, Father. And uh, for uh, Sarah and her husband tonight, we just pray for a good, a good night for him, again, uh, for protection for him. And for uh, those on the front lines, as, as uh, Misty has um, uh, mentioned. And uh, Father, we, uh, we just again ask that you'd strengthen them and help them to meet all the, the pressing needs uh, that are all around them. And Father, just with uh, all the, how this has changed our schedules and it's changed our lives so much, uh, Father, help us to uh, have your perspective on our, our families. Give us a real uh, love for each other, a real grace for each other uh, as our schedules are changing, as, as uh, so many things are different. Help us to just show love for one another. Help us to be patient and kind. Give us your strength uh, to be able to do that, Father. And help us to really enjoy this, this time and enjoy the relationships. Uh, Father, help us to be able to do that. And Father, we thank you that you're always at work in our hearts to, uh, to grow us, to teach us. 
and to help us be servants to those people you put in our lives. So we just look to you for strength and wisdom on how to do that. And Father, we just, again, thank you for who you are, that you're God who wants to communicate with us through the Bible. You want us to communicate with you through prayer. And thank you that you just so much want uh, a relationship with us and you want time with us. We just thank you for, for who you are, Father. And again, ask for your protection on our first responders and medical communities and on our families, Father. And we ask this for your good. Right, so can everyone say goodnight? Bye. 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 Bye.